Today we're going to be doing the first oil change on my 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. So of course, as with any oil change, you want to make sure you are reading your owner's manual to figure out what kind of oil you need. As you can see, engine oil, 6.4 liter engine, and it says we recommend using Mopar API certified ZRW40 fully synthetic oil, which meets the requirements of the manufacturer material standard MS. A0921. And if we look on the other side here, we can see the actual capacity of the engine oil. So right here we have engine oil with filter, seven and a half quarts. So as you can see right here, since we do need seven and a half quarts, I went ahead and got eight quarts of Penn's oil, ultra platinum, fully synthetic, zero W40. So this right here is exactly what Mopar recommends. And you can see right down here, it even says exclusively recommended for SRT vehicle engines. And then if you look on the back of this, you can see the material standard right here, the MS A0921, and then it also meets the API standard right over here. So you wanna make sure you are buying the correct type of oil. Then when it comes to the oil filter, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and replace it with what it came with from the factory. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be using, the Mopar 339 oil filter. Now, some people for the 392 Wranglers, they do use the, I believe it's the 899 or the 889. It's pretty much just the bigger version of the 339. And then some people also use the SRT filter, which I believe the part number for that ends in 014. It's a white filter specifically for SRT vehicles. Now the 889 and the 014 filters are just a little bit bigger than the 339. So you have a larger capacity. What I've heard about those is that when you're under wide open throttle in a Wrangler 392, it actually has clearance issues with the engine rolling over like this. So that's why I decided to just go with what it came with from the factory. Now you don't absolutely have to do this, but I went ahead and bought a brand new drain plug as well. It is a good idea to go ahead and replace the washer on the inside after every oil change. I'm just replacing the washer because I know these can get rounded off pretty easily. I had that experience with my Challenger as well in the past. So that's the reason that I went ahead and just bought a brand new drain plug. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking me why I'm not taking advantage of the Jeep Wave program, which basically is three free oil changes and three free tire rotations. Now, the reason for that is pretty simple. I just don't trust dealerships with any kind of service. And I do have personal bad experiences with my Challenger. One time I took it to the dealership for an oil change and they left the oil cap completely unscrewed just laying there. So that's when I decided, you know, I'm just gonna continue doing my own oil changes. That way I can have some peace of mind. I know exactly what's going into my Jeep and I know it's being done the way I want to do it. I'd rather pay like 80 or 90 bucks for eight quarts of oil and a filter than to have to worry about if it's being done correctly. So peace of mind, I just want to know that it's being done correctly and I want to know that the correct type of oil and filter are going in my Jeep. Your owner's manual also will have recommended service intervals. So for the Wrangler 392 specifically, it is every 6,000 miles or six months, whichever comes first. So that's for your oil change and tire rotation. So make sure you check your owner's manual to make sure what interval you should be doing your own services. A lot of owner's manuals also have a note section in the back and I like to utilize that space to actually track my own services. So for example, if I'm doing an oil change and tire rotation, I'll just write however many miles went by and the service that I did. So for this one today, I think I'm at like 5,200 miles right now. So a little bit under 6,000, but I would just write 5,200 miles, oil change, oil filter, and then I'm also gonna be doing a tire rotation, but that's gonna be a separate video. So first step in an oil change, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the oil cap under the hood. So let's go ahead and open this thing up real quick. Now we can go ahead and pop the hood here. Now it is also a good idea to do this while the engine is just a little bit warm just so the engine oil can flow a little bit better. Here's the nice 392 that we all love. If we look right over here, this is the oil cap. So we're gonna unscrew this right here. And you definitely wanna make sure that no dust actually gets in there. So once you unscrew it, I would just go ahead and maybe prop it up just like that. Now the reason that we wanna unscrew the actual oil cap before actually unscrewing the drain plug is just so that there's less vacuum and so that the oil can actually drain faster and just quicker and easier. But also while we're up here, just for reference, right here is the oil dipstick. This is used to actually check the oil level once you've actually filled up the oil. So we'll go ahead and do that towards the end of this video today. Next step is gonna to be to actually drain the oil. So if you go underneath the Jeep, you just wanna look for the oil pan. It's pretty hard to miss. 
If you look right here, oil pan is this little black pan right here, and the drain plug is right there. So that's gonna be a 13 millimeter, and obviously you wanna make sure you have like towels or newspapers underneath, just in case anything does spill, and then obviously you wanna have some drain pans. I have two right here, just in case one overflows. So let's go ahead and do that. So sometimes the drain plug can be a little bit tight, so it does take some force to actually break it loose. So I just have this little 13 millimeter wrench right here. It's a good idea to kind of like hold it down with your other hand. And then obviously you just need some leverage and it'll just break loose that way. So once you break it loose, you just want to go ahead and untighten it by hand. Now it's a good idea to apply some pressure just so it doesn't completely, you know, fall out once it actually unscrews completely. So let's see if I can do this. And obviously make sure you got the bucket right below it so it doesn't spill. Alright, there we go. Not too bad. Then you want to make sure obviously to hold on to the drain plug. Obviously I'm replacing mine so I'm not going to actually need this. So I've got the second bucket ready right here just in case we need it. And like I said, this is seven and a half quarts. So it is quite a bit of oil in here. Going to get it ready just in case. Alright, going to go ahead and switch it right now. I don't think we spilled anything, so that looks good. Right now, since I'm just having it drain, I'm just gonna let it drain for probably like 20 to 30 minutes or so. We are now at the front of the Jeep, and while we are waiting for the oil to actually drain, let's go ahead and undo the filter. Now this one can be a little bit more difficult to get to and actually unscrew just because of the location. A lot of the steering components here are also in the way, making it just a little bit more difficult to get to. So, right here is where the actual filter is. And as you can see, I've already put a bunch of newspapers on the steering components just so, you know, I want to try to keep as much oil off of them as possible. Just keep it as clean as possible. Now, there will be oil actually draining out of the filter once you unscrew it. So you want to make sure to have an actual drain pan below it once you do unscrew it as well. The easiest way that I have found to actually access the filter, instead of going from the very bottom, I think it's easiest to just go like through the side this way and just reach up in there that way. Now it's also a good idea if you do have a, like a filter attachment, just like this. You can use this and it'll make it a lot easier to actually untighten it and just break the filter loose. After you break it loose, you can just go ahead and undo it the rest of the way by hand. And just like I said, make sure you have a drain pan right below it. So as you can see here, we do have a bunch of newspapers on the steering components so the oil doesn't drip onto them as much we do also have this drain pan right below it i did break it loose with the filter wrench now i'm just gonna remove it and loosen it the rest of the way by hand it is dripping a little bit just gonna make sure the drain pan is getting everything right here Leaking just a bit more. Quite a bit of oil coming out of the filter there. Good thing we do have these newspapers. They kind of serve as like a funnel to actually funnel the oil to the pan instead of just going all over the steering components and kind of like splattering everywhere over the floor. continue dripping. Did get a little bit of oil right here on 
uh, the steering components right here whenever I removed the actual filter by hand so that's not a huge deal we can just wipe that off later now we're going to continue letting the oil pan and the filter drain for about half an hour and then we're going to come back and install the new filter install the new drain plug and fill it up with fresh oil so now that the filter has been draining for a while i'm going to go ahead and clean up the area where the filter is going to go as well as the area where the new drain plug is going to be screwed in So here we have the new oil filter. What I'm going to do is actually just spread a little bit of oil on the actual gasket right around the edge here. Now some people do pre-fill the filter actually putting oil inside. That's not necessary. I'm not going to do it here but just a suggestion that some people do do that. So what I'm going to do is I have this little cloth here and I'm just going to use a tiny little drop of the new oil. And kind of use that to spread on the gasket of the new oil filter right here just like this and this just helps to create a better seal and just lubricate it up a little bit better all right let's just do one more drop here for good measures All right, and then after we are done lubricating the actual gasket of the filter, we're gonna go ahead and install it back into the Jeep. So now what I'm going to do is actually pour a few drops of the new oil into the actual engine while the drain plug is still off. And this is just so any of the old oil that's just like stuck in there or hasn't drained will be drained out with the new oil. So obviously this isn't going to be like a lot, it's just going to be a few drops like I said. Obviously you want to make sure that you still have a drain pan right below the drain plug just because this new oil is still going to flow out. So just a few drops here. There you can see after you poured in the new oil, it is draining out just very slowly. Now obviously it's a huge engine, so it's not gonna just flow straight through. So it did take quite a few seconds, I would say probably like 10 to 20 seconds before I actually saw it like flowing through the drain plug again. I'm gonna let this drain out for a few more minutes and I'm gonna clean up this area and then screw in the new drain plug. So as you can see here, the oil is still kind of dripping out. I'm assuming this is just all the new oil mixed with the some of the old oil that was still in there i'm gonna go ahead and just you know wipe it off here real quick and then we can go ahead and screw in the new drain plug just want to make this nice and clean now like i said this is a brand new drain plug um, like i said not super necessary but it is a good idea to at least change out the washer on the inside there I just went ahead and bought a brand new drain plug. Go ahead and screw it in. Alrighty, we can move the drain pan out of the way. And now, like I said, this is going to be a 13 millimeter, so we'll just go ahead and tighten this down. Now, some people do use a torque wrench to tighten their drain plug. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but you know, if you want to, go ahead and do that. I didn't see any kind of torque specs in the owner's manual for the drain plug. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up as much as it was whenever I loosened it, at least just by feel. All right, I'm gonna call that good. That's pretty tight on there. Just give it a few more wipes here, make sure it's all clean. And then one more tightening just for good measures. All right, that's pretty tight. All right, now we got the drain plug on, we got the new filter on. 
Now all we have to do is fill up the oil completely. All right, so we got the funnel in here. We're gonna start pouring in the oil. Like I said, I do have eight quarts and the capacity is supposed to be seven and a half. So I'm gonna do seven and then I'll start checking how high it is after that. And while I'm doing this, I'm also checking for leaks in the drain plug in the filter just to be safe. I got the seven and a half quarts all filled up into my Jeep here. Now I did mark the halfway point on the last bottle here just to make sure that I was filling exactly half, just to make sure it wasn't going anything under, anything over. So now I'm gonna go ahead and screw on the cap right here. And then I'm gonna let the Jeep run for a bit, show you guys how to reset the actual oil life gauge on the inside. And then we're gonna go ahead and check the dipstick. So now that we are all finished up with the oil change, I'm going to show you guys how to actually reset the oil life on your Jeep. So for this, you want the Jeep to be in run mode, but you don't want to actually start the vehicle up. So I'm just going to hit the ignition button without my foot on the brake. Now we are in the run position. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the actual menu that shows the actual oil life. Vehicle info right here. So we see we're at 12% and it says hold OK to reset. I'm going to hold the OK button. And there we go, we are now at 100%. And now we can go ahead and turn off the ignition. Then just for my own reference here, I went ahead and took a quick note that I did in fact change the oil and the filter on September 29th at 5,293 miles. We go ahead and start up the Jeep now and let it run for a bit. Then we can go ahead and check the oil dipstick. So a good thing to do after you've changed your oil and your filter is to just leave like a piece of cardboard underneath the Jeep overnight just to check for any kind of leaks. And also while we're here, I figured out show you guys a quick flex here. So 16 average miles per gallon in a 392 Wrangler. That's basically unheard of. If you can find anything higher than that, for sure let me know because I feel like that's the highest I've seen out of any 392 Wranglers. So while I'm sitting here waiting for the Jeep to warm up, I also pulled up the oil pressure just to take a look at that. Sitting at 55, which I feel like is pretty normal, so nothing really to be worried about there. Doing a quick check here under the Jeep to make sure nothing's leaking while it's running. Everything's looking good so far. No leaks right now. I'm supposed to wait about five minutes before checking the dipstick after warming the vehicle up. It's been just about five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and check the dipstick. So of course, when checking the dipstick, you wanna take it out one time, wipe it off, put it all the way back in, then take it back out, and that's how you can check it. And as you can see right here, we are pretty much right on the money as far as the dipstick reading goes. So pretty happy with how all this went. Looks like seven and a half quarts is right on the money. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video of how to change an oil and an oil filter. Of course, I did this specific to my 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392, but the process is pretty much the same for any vehicle out there. So if you guys have any questions or anything to add to this video, make sure to drop that down in the comment section below. Make sure to also subscribe for more 392 Wrangler videos as well as Jeep Cherokee XJ videos. And as always, thanks for watching.